Now we're going to see how to add tests or quizzes, uh, things that the students can take online and uh, in certain circumstances they'll be graded entirely online, uh, graded automatically. So let's see how to do that. I've got my a class here, this uh, middle school test class, and notice that we have we've set up a couple of folders here. Uh, remember, I encouraged you to do that, just it helps with organizing your materials. So let's say that I'm going to give a quiz in this unit on the Exodus. So I open up that unit, go to Add Materials, I'm going to add a test or quiz. Okay. So we're going to call this, we'll say that this is a quiz uh, on the uh, Ten Plagues. Okay, and this test is going to be this Friday on the 11th. Uh, and the category, it's a quiz. Okay, and we're going to use our standard grading scale with it. Okay, so uh, that's just kind of the basics. Uh, by the way, you can go back and change these later uh, if you decide you want to. Okay, so after you click create, then it brings up this screen here, uh, just a blank screen. So it says you do not currently have any questions. So you click add a question. And here it gives you the choices of uh, different types of questions. You can have a true false, multiple choice, ordering where they have to put different items in order. You can give a short answer or essay question. That can be fill in the blank or matching. So those are the types. Now you can also have, get questions from question banks, which we'll talk about later. You can import tests and quizzes, which we'll talk about later. Page break and text is how you can add items that might organize the quiz. So, But now we're just going to look at a basic quiz, and we're going to say that this is multiple choice. Okay. Uh, I mean, you can mix up the questions any way you want. So then you get this screen. Here you're going to... Uh, type in the uh, stem. Since this is a multiple choice, you have a stem and then you have several answers. So we'll say the first plague was, and then we'll say that it was frogs, lice, uh, third choice would be um, uh, darkness, and uh, we can say um, uh, then death, okay. And honestly, at this point, I don't recall which one was the first one. I think it was frogs, but I'm not sure. Uh, but we'll say it is, okay. So over here, you say, okay, which of these is the correct answer? That's for grading purposes. So we'll say that frogs is the correct answer. If you want to have more than four choices, you can add more choices. If you want to have fewer, you can remove blanks so on, okay? So those are your choices. Then you have down here some options. You can randomize choices. If you check that, that means that when one student pulls up this question, he'll see these particular answers in one order. Another student who pulls up the same question will see those same answers, but they'll be in a different order. So it won't be that all of them will pick choice number one or something like that. That helps with uh, cheating, helps to avoid cheating. Allowing partial credit, uh, you could choose to do that. Timed question would mean that you only give them a certain amount of time to take this question. You might say, well, I expect them to know this within 10 seconds. So when they open it up, they have 10 seconds and they have to choose, or if not, they, it's wrong. You can give a point value for the uh, questions down here if you choose. Uh, it defaults to 10 points, uh, but what is actually going to happen down here is that however many questions you have in your quiz, if you say that this is that you have quizzes graded as percentage, then the point value doesn't make any difference unless you say that you want to have one question worth twice as much as another one. Uh, there are some advanced options here where you can align learning objectives. You want to, if uh, we're not going to be doing that, but if you were to say that you wanted to show well this is aligned to a particular standard, you can do that. Okay, so then you click create question, and so there's your question. Okay, 
then you go back, you can add another question. You can say multiple choice, you can make it different. Let's say we're, this next one is true, false. Okay, so we're going to say that uh, the plague of lice was um, only on Israel. Okay, and then you could say, okay, text for true, text for false, defaults like this, but especially if you have younger children, you might want to say, I agree or I disagree or something like that. And then you say down here, what's the correct answer? Well, the correct answer for this one is false. And you can click here and say, well, if, if, if they select false, then they need to tell what the correct answer would be. They need to show a correction. Okay, you could do that. Uh, subjective question uh, would be it's not automatically graded. Uh, instead, it's worded in a way that uh, maybe you need to grade it. Again, timed question, point value, and so on, just like with the other one. So we create the question. So now we have two questions on the quiz. Let's add one more. Okay, let's add a short answer or essay question. Okay, and here we want to say something like, why uh, did God distinguish between Israel and Egypt? And here you could say, well, I want to give them a limit. Uh, allowing rich text means that they can do formatting if they want to. Allowing video or audio. Your students could give a video or audio answer if you want. Again, timed question. And then you're going to create the question. Okay, let's try one more here just to show you the different types. Here's a fill in the blank. Okay, so um, then it says to begin, you type the sentence you want the test taker to see. For words you want to be blank, simply enter an underscore, and then you'll have further instructions. So, let's say that we want to say the uh, leader of Egypt was, and we'll put an underscore, okay? And then the correct answer is Pharaoh. Okay. But you might want to say, okay, let's add, let's give them, okay, if they do it without a capital letter, uh, you could say something like that. Or you might even say, well, it's okay if they misspell it. Then they tend to do that. Okay, you can decide how you want to do that. Okay, but this means that whichever of these answers they type in, it's going to be counted as correct. Okay. Uh, some other options there you can try out. But that's how a fill in the blank works. Okay. Now, here are some options you may want to consider. Uh, you can reorder your questions if you want. If you say, well, I think I want something to be in a different order. You can do that, okay? Uh, but let's say this is all right. Okay, click here on settings to show you some other options. This is where you can enter uh, some overall instructions if you want to. Uh, availability. Hide now. This means that you can go ahead and make up the quiz and it won't be visible to the students until you choose. So we could say hide now. We could say it's available from Okay, and here you could say on this particular date, and you could give the uh, time period of your class. Or you could just say hide it now, and then you just realize, okay, you're going to make it available when you want to. Uh, but you have to at some point make it available so they'll even see it. Here you can say, is there a time limit to this quiz? Uh, how many times will you let them take the quiz? Maybe you say, well, I want them to take it, and then if they don't do well, they can take it again. This would be the type of thing if you don't have objective type answers. Uh, randomize the order is helpful. What this is going to do is that the uh, questions themselves will be in a different order for each student who takes the quiz. So one student's first question might be the one about what was the first plague. The other student's first question might be uh, who was the leader of Egypt. Uh, so again, this helps cut down on cheating. Question review would mean that uh, before they submit it, they can go back over it and look and make sure that they answered it correctly. 
Uh, resumable would mean that, okay, if they don't finish it, they can come back and finish it later. We'll say no. View submissions. Uh, they can see whether they got it right or not. They can see their grade. And if you do yes with correct answers, they'll even see, okay, which ones did they miss and what did they, what was the right answer? Okay. Or you might say, no, uh, this might be the way to go in most cases just because uh, you don't want students sharing, okay, hey, I got this one right, and so here's the right answer to that one. Okay. So then after you do that, you click Save Changes. Be sure you look for that type of thing at the bottom of the pages to save changes. Uh, you can preview your quiz. If you click Preview, it's going to show you what it looks like to a student. So you click here and it shows you, okay, here are the questions and uh, what they will look like. Okay. Um, and so then uh, you would do that, okay. So that's how you uh, set up the quiz. The students take it and then after they take it you can open up this quiz and then and you can see the results. Okay, so you can view the students that took it uh, in that order. You can view by the question to see, okay, uh, you can look at, okay, on the first question, who got that one right? Who, who missed it? What, was, uh, what responses did they make? That type of thing. So you can analyze that. So anyway, that's how. Now, when you set this up, by the way, when you set up a quiz or a test, it's automatically going to be go into your grade book. See, here it is, the 10 plagues. Okay. So that uh, you don't have to go back in and say, okay, now let me add it to the grade book. It's automatically going to go in there and it'll get graded as a quiz. So that's how you set up, how you, how you do quizzes and tests online in Schoology.